Cool, cool, cool. Hello. Good evening, friends. Hey, Fire. How you doing? How's it going? Hello on YouTube. How are you? Hey, Arthur. How are you doing? How's it going? Hey, Nishar. Hey, how are you? <laughs> how is everybody? My goodness. My goodness. My friends. Hey, Jason. How are you? Alexis, Sean. Hello, hello, hello. Let me just like pause all of these. Uh, I would usually have the screen going on the other, or the stream going on the other screen. What you, what you doing right now? I'm just waiting for people to file in a little bit before I get started. I'll probably start getting uh, sketching in three minutes. <laughs> Hey Thomas. So for um, the new people here, hi, I'm Ashley. If you don't know me, uh, won't be surprised if you don't. <laughs> I am a character and creature concept artist and character artist uh, as a whole. And on these streams, I like to just sketch and have fun. Uh, there's not really any particular goal here. It's quite literally just taking a spear and sketching and seeing what it kind of turns into. Um, it's just sort of like an exercise and it's just to show a bunch of you know a bunch of ways to just have fun with the clay rather than being tied down to specific ideas all the time it's just it's fun it's it's like it's like when you open up your sketchbook and you just start doodling stuff it's the same kind of thing so that's what we're gonna be doing um usually it's like a weird creature comes out of it something or other I usually end up seeing some kind of an animal in whatever I'm doing, and it'll evolve in that way. Hey, Adam's family. <laughs> hey, Jaggle Bones. Hey, guys. Hey, Reaper. You got your Ryzen system? That's amazing. Awesome. You liking it? I am also in the Ryzen family now. Took a while for me to hop off the intel wagon, but we're here. All right, okay, so um, as I'm going, also, if you guys have like any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask me. It's usually like a super chill, super lax session. Um, yeah, we're just sketching, so if you wanna sketch with me, feel free. It's like a study group kind of thing. <laughs> they should. I, Honestly, um, I appreciate that Adam's family, but like the thing is like I, I I'm the one that chooses my schedule and I'm like super busy a lot of the time I love being here when I am here and it's awesome that they let me <laughs> They let me just do my my stupid stuff on here when they whenever I really want it's really like Yeah, PixLogic's really great about that All right, let's get started do I normally start from a sphere? Um, when I'm doing, when I am doing uh, the stuff on this channel, yeah, I usually just kind of like grab a sphere and just sort of like pull it and do like whatever. So you're gonna see like a lot of stretching and pulling, and that's that's okay because like we're just kind of creating um, some crazy shapes here, and those crazy shapes are gonna turn into creatures, and all of this artifacting is actually going to help us in the Dynamesh phase, so I'm using it as sort of like sketch lines, the same way that you would, uh, you know, use a pencil and just sort of sketch around in your, your sketchbook. So it looks all nasty right now, but the beauties of Dynamesh means that you don't have to worry about any of that. The only thing that you really gotta worry about is like maybe like making sure things are thick enough in certain areas. Which is why I put back face masking on um, my clay buildup brush. <laughs> Zbrush princess, nice username. <laughs> Where's Monty boy? Monty boy's in his bed. Oh, not that bed. In his other bed. There's two beds in this room. <laughs> Can you call me Ash? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I actually, I usually introduce myself lately. I've been introducing myself as, as Ash uh, to a lot of people. It's just, I don't know, it's easy. Ashley, you know, having like two syllables just feels like formal, you know? I mean, just the one syllable, like, hey, I'm Ash. It's like chill, right? It's just like, yeah. It's like, hey, that's Joe. <laughs> Or whatever. Just, it's just chill. It's like relax. And that's what we want here. We want we want chill. We want lax. We want fun. We want learning. We want whatever it is. Whatever it is that we're doing. We want we want to just be enjoying art. Also, if you guys want me to like, you know, up the music, make it a little louder, I can totally do that as well. It's not loud enough for you guys, I don't know. It's loud, it's loud enough in my ears, but you can never really tell what everybody else is feeling. You have mixed feelings about Sculptress. Well, if you've, if you've tried it out and it's not really like your thing, that's like totally fair. I actually don't use Sculptress that much um, because I like working, like this is my workflow, is I, I like working with uh, Dynamesh specifically. Um, so if you've already tried it and it's not really like for you, then that's, that's totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with something not fitting into your workflow. But it really depends on like why you say that you have mixed feelings about it. Like. If, uh, if you haven't actually given it a shot, or, if, you know, maybe it is you just haven't found a, a reason to use it, then that's, like, whatever. But for me, like, the, like I would, I would normally be using uh, Sculptress for areas of, like, you know, fingers or toes and things like that, um, because usually Dynamesh likes to clog those together because they're so close to each other he's a sleepy boy he is he's a sleepy boy he went on a long w-a-l-k <laughs> it's weird how much of a difference there is between here and twitch what is twitch really laggy i have no idea uh, have I zeroed in on something, a design? Well, considering we've only really been doing anything for five minutes, no. I usually start to figure out what it is that uh, we're doing by the two hour mark or so. I mean, I usually do have an idea of some kind by like earlier than that, but Right now, it looks like it's just a little bit of like a alien thingy. Probably gonna exaggerate shapes and things. Cause right now, it's just sort of putting stuff down, seeing where that goes. Even that, that feels kind of cool. So this, I do like the idea of it being, I don't know, we could do like a little bit of like a smile thing here, but we're going to have it dictated kind of by all of this uh, artifacty stuff and see how that ends up looking once we dynamesh it, because I feel like some interesting stuff can come out uh, of these sketchy lines. I say artifacts, but really what it is, is just like sketch, sketch lines. What 
tablet do I use? Um, this is a Wacom uh, Cintiq. Uh, it's not the touch version though. It's a 20, 21.5 inch. How do I like Z Modeler comp compared to modeling in say Cinema 4D? Um, Z Modeler as what it is right now, I personally use it for only like minor things. I don't like doing full modeling in ZBrush because that's just not what I'm used to. I'm used to doing more, um, more, more uh, modeling, like base modeling, box modeling as you'll call it, um, inside of Maya rather than ZBrush. But uh, Z Modeler is very useful for like minor tweaks here and there where I'm like, oh, I don't want to like import, export, import, export, import, export for just like some small changes, you know? So you can see like all of this like artifacting stuff, I haven't even dynameshed, but I do like to use that as sort of like guidelines to kind of sketch on top of and create like interior um, shapes, things that, you know, could add some more detail and some more interesting, um, I guess, base bases for design when we do dynamesh. When it comes to doing concepts in general, I wouldn't say that this is like the only thing that I will, I will do like in order to concept something either. It's just one one way of many that you can approach um, figuring out how to create a bunch of different cool shapes. You're already spooked. <laughs> Ah, uh, thanks, Zebrush Princess. You're from Belarus. You're 16 years old. Wow, welcome to the Zebrush world. It's early to get involved with this stuff. That's nice. I actually, I kind of wish that I got into this when I was 16. I can only imagine how, like, if you, if you're like at it every day from when you're like 16, I can only imagine how much of a, how much of a like, in like a boss you're gonna be. <laughs> Are the companies that hire watch my stream? Yeah, they like different people from all over the place come into these streams. I've uh, seen friends, coworkers, um, people from other studios. Like lots of people come in here. Is it possible to get materials out of ZBrush version of Keyshot into other programs? Uh, you're talking about Keyshot's materials into other programs? Well, what you can do, right, is you can look at the, uh... I don't know about exporting, like, the actual material as a material file or anything like that because I've never done it, but what you can do, let's say you want to replicate what's in Keyshot in Maya or wherever, you can look at the values that are put into the material. Like, let's say you have a plastic material. Well, what makes it look like that plastic are all of the attributes of that material. It's not necessarily like, you know, texture maps or anything like that. So theoretically speaking, you can mimic the same sort of a thing. However, different render engines will handle these things differently as well. Hey, Magart. Like a week or two? Yeah, I know. I, I know. And I'm going to be off again for another two weeks as well. Um, Canada Day is next, uh, next week. Not that I'm going to go out and do anything, but... Yay, Canada, I guess. It is a Quebec holiday today, actually. So here I'm just kind of like thinking about how I can follow this like this line here and follow it down into 
into the jaw and create some kind of a some kind of an interesting flow. We don't want anything too abrupt. So same with this, is we want like I'm gonna think of like liquid. We want this to be not too harsh. There has to be some sort of a subtlety to the curves as well. And it is difficult, like, you know, um, dealing with curves on multiple angles. You do need to always be kind of floating around your model, like, back and forth, like, through different views just to see what it is that you're doing and making sure that it looks good in all, all different angles. So do I do 3D modeling for animations, for video games, or am I not mutually exclusive? Um, okay, so I do 3D modelings for animation, so TV and film. Uh, I am open to doing it for video games as well, however I have not had a contract for video games. It's just sort of been a lot of different TV shows, a lot of different um, pitch projects for upcoming movies that may or may not get cancelled, you know, that kind of a thing. <laughs> oh, I, I appreciate it, Julia. I'm glad it's fun to watch. It's honestly, it's a lot more fun to do yourself. I recommend trying it. It's really addicting. <laughs> I don't want this guy to have like ridiculously long traps. You know what I mean? That would be kind of like crazy looking. Like really like slinky arms, but like long, like <laughs> like where it looks like wrong almost. Let's see if I can do that. Might take a little bit of uh, finagling, but I think we can make it work. and have it kind of like where the clavicle kind of comes forward it might be interesting so this would be like you know where the shoulder is Right, so like the clavicle would come out here, and then this would be like a really, really like thin, thin pec skin that's just sort of like connecting it. Like there's just like really thin muscle structure underneath. Like really lean, I guess is the better word. It's lean. And this would have to come up like so. Could be interesting. Maybe. Wait, hold on. Gotta get off, dynamic off. That's another thing too. Sometimes I, I want to take dynamic off. Sometimes I just make the model smaller and then I keep dynamic on. Depends on the project, but um, for things like this, it doesn't matter if dynamic is on or not because I'm not trying to maintain the same brush size for everything that I'm doing. I'm just kind of going quickly. And dirty. I don't care how dirty all of this looks. Using the low poly to kind of dictate like just the the main sort of shapes that I need. I don't need to add a whole bunch of detail right now because I just need to see what the uh, overall shape is going to be. And so as even though it looks all artifacty and gross, you can still kind of see um, where those those landmarks are that you're trying to create. Like this in the back could probably come out more than that. Definitely come down. Right? And then Uh, we'll use a sphere because we're on a roll with the spheres, right? 
Now I'm probably going to play around with uh, how this is feeling um, gesturally as well. But for right now, we're just gonna put everything down. And once we have everything down, then we will go into a transpose, like all kind of thing, and it'll merge all of the subtools together and I'll be able to like do g more gestural work with it. You missed the Monty break. No, no, we've only been going for 20 minutes. It's all good. Your uncle and cousins are in Quebec. Very nice, very nice. 97 years old and you're here? Wow, kudos, dude. Keep it going. Give it another 10. <laughs> Hell yes. That's awesome. And then you're still like, you're like really into art and stuff. That's amazing. Good for you, dude. Uh, the portfolio projects I see in Art Station are they low topple with very good maps? Uh, so a, there, there are a lot. Like if you're looking at game models, then yes, it's called the low poly, and a lot of the normals um, will compensate for the detail, right? But you get that detail from doing a high poly model and then baking. It's called baking the details down into texture maps that you can then apply to the low poly model. And this is an efficient way to um, fake, you know, detail in your in your models, which is what uh, game models do. It's an art in itself for sure. Do you think there's an advantage of using a tablet with a screen? I think, um, yes, there there is. Sorry. Uh, there There is in the fact that you don't have to worry so much about um, a lack of hand-eye coordination because you're working like directly on it. Whereas like when you have a tablet on your desk, there is a disconnect because you're looking up at a screen while your hand is doing something down here. And that doesn't feel as natural as, you know, when you're doing something on a screen. However, there's a huge price jump that happens when you get a screen tablet versus a tablet on your desk. And so for the initial like artists coming into all of this or hobbyist or somebody who's not quite sure if they want to do this, like, you know, and they don't have a lot of money, I don't recommend getting a screen and it's not necessary. It's sort of one of those things that you get later down the line when you know, yes, okay, I really want to take this serious, right? Where, so you look at photography, right? You're not going to jump into photography by going to like the same, cameras that National Geographic photographers are using, right? Like you're not, obviously there's there's jumps and leaps and bounds with that technology that is going to help you a lot compared to a single, you know, a regular just hundred dollar, you know, knockoff sort of thing. But you know, it's, it's, it's to get you going. So I don't, I don't actually uh, recommend you get this right away. Do I use a screen protector for my Cintiq? Just, no, I don't, I use it as is. What model for a Um, it's the 21.5, not the touch. Wacom, Cintiq. Have you ever tried kind of modeling starting from really low poly inside of ZBrush? Um, what do you mean like just like with a square and just like box model with Z modeler? I have tried. It's not my, my favorite thing to do. I'd rather sculpt personally. <clears throat> there's a time that low poly scared me? Yeah, I mean there's a time when everything is scary when you don't really know what it is, right? But then you learn and then it's not scary anymore. Hey Raven. <laughs> Radlin? What's going on? You're not 97? Okay, I thought you were 97. 
thought you were saying you were 97. I was like, dude, and you're hanging out here? What? <laughs> big, big respect. If anybody in here is 90 plus, big respect. <laughs> uh... Hey Scott, how you doing? Ever heard of used Maverick Studio Indie? Used Maverick Studio Indie? Not quite sure what you talking about. I agree, Magart. I agree. Alright. What size to take the 24 or the 32 um the 32 inch is that in my opinion is just like that's like overkill i have the 21.5 and i've used the 27 before i've used the 27 before and you feel like a an actual wizard but the 21.5 is more than you need it really is the 32 i just feel like it's just like what are you gonna what are you gonna do with that where are you gonna put it what are you gonna do with <laughs> it's so much congrats ravelin congrats congrats i'm finishing that it's a big one I'm gonna grab these. Now, I said that I would do proportional work, um, or not proportional, gestural work after, but you can always still, like, start to do a little bit more of that before uh, we get into the final gestural stuff. I'm wondering if like I can even take this a little bit further. Wait, no, that was not the right. I'm gonna do mask pen. Oh, the render program? Okay, all right. Ray tracing render. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay, I thought you were talking about like an indie studio called Maverick. Thanks, Edward. Bigger the better. Yeah, I mean, like, I... I feel like 30... 32 or whatever it was you said, like, 30 plus is just, like, overkill, in my opinion. But if you try it in a store and you like it, then who am I to say anything different? It all comes down to personal preference and what works for for you. But as somebody who's also tried, um, who's also tried the uh, what's it called, the, the twenty-seven inch, I can say that the thirty is probably an overkill. Like I would never get the thirty, especially for like the price difference. I guess maybe if you were doing like more architectural stuff or whatever and you wanted to like maybe I don't know
just kind of like thinking, all right, well, legs can come down here. You can have a, you can have a booty. Give him a butt. Just give him a butt. It's a butt. <laughs> You're me good, good. I'm glad I make you want to sculpt. Sculpt with me. You don't have ZBrush, there's a th free trial for 30 days, and if you don't even want to do like the full version, if you want to just like experience what sculpting is like in 3D, um, ZBrush offered a free version, like a totally free version of ZBrush, it's Logic offered, sorry. It's called ZBrush Core Mini. I feel like it's like worth checking out, you know? If you've never, um, you never thought that you could be like involved in any of this, there is a totally free version. Okay, so this one, there we go. I have this like, this is his stomach. <laughs> This would actually be back like that. These are his ribs. Ribs. So the idea is to just kind of like have this, um, it's called the latissimus dorsi. But just kind of like, well I guess that's more like back here, what that is. I'm really bad at like muscle names, I know where they go, but naming things I've always been really bad at memorizing names. Um, so if you're like that, you're not alone. <laughs> The idea is to have it kind of like, you know, hanging over top of everything else. Just give them more of a, like a back, I think, like a longer back that dips down. I appreciate it, princess. I'm staying safe, staying inside mostly. Got myself an AC so I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> no worries, Talon. Have a great night. Have I ever tried modeling in VR? Yes. Yes, I have. I have used VR for sculpting, um, but I used it like two years ago, so I don't know what it's like now. Oh, the pinch and zoom? Yeah, I wouldn't know. I would not know what that's like. <laughs> I just opted to not have touch, just specifically because um, my Intos Pro that I was using, the touch function on it really bothered me. So I just kind of said, like, nah, I'm not gonna...
Like with the Intos Pro, I could never turn the touch function off. Even when I said it was off, it would keep t it would keep turning itself back on. I just figured, you know, maybe I just maybe I just don't want touch. Like maybe that's just like a fair like just a fair thing. Uh, yeah, so for ZBrush you're talking about, the, the brushes that I use, I have them all mapped to my 1 through 9 keys on the keyboard, and they are all run through. You can see what the brush is right here. Um, Clay Buildup, Damon Standard, H Polish, Snake Hook, Inflate, Pinch, uh, Mac Cut, Mac Gay, which is like, it's, it's a downloadable brush for free, you can find it online. Um, and Slash 2 is another big one that I use a lot as well. But Slash 2 you can find inside of the light box in, in ZBrush. I'm wondering actually for these guys if uh delete this and I want to maybe you know what I'm gonna go into gestural right now let's do pose mash to sub D and and I start pulling this out and figuring out more of like what it is that we want this to be Also, usually how I start to pose things at the end of a uh, when I'm done sculpting. I'm going to make sure that that's masked so I don't like do some freaky stuff with the eyeballs, make them not round or whatever. Which, you know, you don't always have to have round eyeballs, but...
Booty. <laughs> Gonna try and give a little bit more of something something right here. A little more of something something. super silly warm it it has been for the last little while um today was like the first like just 25 degree day in a while which was really nice but it was like 35 celsius every single day for the last like week which uh was not fun not fun my my cold faring heart was not ready for that. T pose to sub T to bring that all back, like so. And then I'll do duplicate and like this. And I will duplicate this. Put it down. Edit. It rests on top. We can integrate this one as well. Move it to the side. Now, you can have more arms. More arm things, anyways. So this stuff, though, I really want to do something with the back here. I'm even thinking like maybe it won't be laying down like this. Thinking that uh, general, we might have to change the way that this looks. Cause I'm not not too happy. That's okay. The series of experiments. Now we have to balance this, which is probably going to be the harder thing, I think. Hmm. Do you like Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Get a booty. I'm going to go back into... Actually, quickly, I'm gonna save just so I don't lose any of this stuff, and then I'm gonna go back into uh, T pose. How do I change the color of the various icons, and what color number is that? It's really cool. Um, you can change that in the preferences in eye color. Hold on. Sec. Let me save this really quick. One nineteen. <clears throat> so 
So if you go into preferences and you go to eye colors, you can actually change everything right here. So you can just adjust whatever, really like anything, anything at all that you want. Um, the ones that I did were just these two, these two, and everything else is just a darker, darker color. So it's not part bird? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Human head spider from the last It movie? Oh god. The stuff from the It movie was insane. It's absolutely freaky stuff. We go into preferences and just select a underscore cubed. <laughs> no. Okay, let me get this. This is such a happy little song, isn't it? do one of these at a time. Oh, this is going to get dynameshed. It'll end up all of the uh, all of this will end up helping the way it looks in the end. grab this one I think we're gonna just like nah first then like this I'm gonna mask up the eyeballs again, and then I will pull this down. I will probably pull this. Hey, I gotta, whoop, I gotta mask off the area where the eyeballs are as well. I'm gonna pull these out. here we could even do a little bit more now I'm gonna grab all of this stuff and I'll try and make the arms look a little bit better because right now it doesn't have that same like long trap feel because the head is now big so we got to balance these arms
<laughs> Thanks for being here, princess. Can I, can my dog say a word by now? <laughs> he can't speak English. <laughs> he can bark. Oh my goodness. A third it? I don't even, I don't like, that, like, I don't know what would that, what would they do? What would they do with it? Cause the thing is they went through the book, right? I guess they would go off of whatever the heck they wanted to write. I don't know. The book itself was really messed up. I don't know what Stephen King is on, man. Could I create and finish one without Dynamesh? Um, I mean, technically, yeah, but you can't really like get any of that artifacting like to turn into like a base sort of thing if you don't use Dynamesh. You just have everything looking really like crunchy. So if you don't want everything to look really crunchy, then Dynamesh is your go-to. Like to watch this from the very beginning? Is it possible? Yep. Yeah. Um. It's going to be on YouTube, like the whole thing. I would check like after a few hours when the stream is done. So the stream is not done in like three hours from now. And then it usually takes a little bit for it to upload at full quality uh, on YouTube, but it will be there on the Fixologic channel. Grab this and this and this. <clears throat> Give it a longer neck. So I'm just trying to kind of balance this thing out a little bit so we don't, like, so it just kind of makes more sense. Um, when we're talking about gravity and all that, and like how it would support itself, give it more of an interesting shape as well. This one's kind of, I want to do this, 
So you're looking like when again when I'm doing this kind of stuff, it is like an overall like I'm looking at the silhouette. I'm trying to get some like strong shapes, like so like strong like uh, lines here. Like everything's got like these like sharp angles and then curves to contrast that. So sharp and then curve, kind of a thing. Um, I think with this we're gonna wanna. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll try and do a little bit more here with the neck. Cause as much as I like it going up like that, it needs a little bit of like a like a feeling of gravity. This maybe it'll come out more. We'll figure out what this thing is in a, in a bit. I think with the, uh, the horns too, I like it up there, but I also don't like this profile being the way that it is. So I'm gonna play around with it, maybe get it to be a little bit more um, streamlined, in a sense. So this kind of being more down like this. Give it a little bit more oomph on the neck here. allowing things to be weird nothing wrong with letting your sculpt be a little freaky deaky now we're starting to get it so here we're gonna want these to be a little bit chunky a little bit more chunky but also keeping that nice sort of like line thing that we have and Calf muscles. I watched uh, Maddie Spencer's stream. I watched a little bit of it. I didn't have time to hang out for the whole thing, but I did watch a little bit of it. I, I, I think she's really a really good teacher. Um, did I? change the thing on the top left corner where the silhouette is to white and no background. Oh no, I keep forgetting to save out my, uh, I keep forgetting to save out my, my document so that it actually stays like that every time I open ZBrush. It's, it's fine though, this works too. <laughs> what is that silhouette? Bad. Okay, I'm sorry you feel that way. How did I change the thing uh, on... Oh, how how did I change it? Okay, I thought you said, did I? Okay, so if you want to change it, um, you go into the preferences and then you scroll down to thumbnail and you can click thumbnail and the background color right here, just turn this to black and then it won't have a background anymore. Hey, Grandma, welcome. When I design, do I think of some superpower or supernatural force that I create? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no. When I when I design, I just I just I just hope that I can figure something out with it and it kind of looks cool, you know? Sometimes it takes me a lot longer than other days to get to a cool design. And some days I just don't get there at all, you know? But again, it comes down to what what is perceived so some people will think the bad days are actually really good days whereas i'll just you know look at them as like eh, what was i thinking and that's okay that is a-okay
but I consider adding some mechanical parts. Doom like demon. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. We'll see how this ends up. I don't really know. We're just having fun. Adding mech parts is, is always fun. Just like a little, like, in, just in terms of like a design, um, breakup. But it really depends on what you're doing too. Like if you're if you're just like willy nilly adding mech parts just just because it's, it's good to think of like the story of what you're doing. However, when you're just kind of sketching whatever it is like this, it's like we can we can do whatever you want. This looks like a like an almond sack. So we're just going to cover his um, uh, bag. Cause we don't I don't think this is looking what it's like supposed to be looking like down over here right now we're just gonna censor that <laughs> sorry sir no cashews today try again another day Okay. There we go. I think it needed to, I think it needs to just open up more. And uh if we're gonna do you know what if we're gonna do this like long head thing I know I've been like messing around with this like for a little bit now but if we're just gonna if we're gonna go for the long head the long neck we should just go for it And this one, kind of want to exaggerate that sort of tapering that's happening here. I really, I like it. Whatever tapering is going on there, kind of is adding a nice little curve to the, like the really harsh lines. This one. This thing scares you? Good. <laughs> Looks like an insect. Yeah, I'd say it probably has part insect. I'm thinking right here though. I wanna, hold on. First, let me like bring this back to T-Po, sub T. Wow, we did a lot, didn't we? It completely changed. I'm liking this direction a lot more though. Um, I'm gonna save that out. And I'm thinking I'm gonna actually put little hands here. Be like female praying mantis demon feel bad for her <laughs> oh my god it needs wings actually maybe we'll see 
or at least like tendrils, something coming from the back, right? Still playing with proportions because getting proportions down is incredibly important for a, uh, a really cool design. When you get that initial read that just has that sharpness to it, really, really makes a difference. And actually hitting that though is another question. Some, you know, some of these streams is a little bit of a miss for me, but maybe we'll hit it today. Okay, that's that's a little tiny though. We uh, <laughs> these are like really. Oh, really tiny hands. <laughs> you know, like those little plastic hands that you can put on your fingers? That's what this looks like. That's what he's like playing with. It's like the little mini hands that you put on your fingers. Give me some time to work on it. Yeah, I mean that's a thing, right? Like we've been we've been live for an hour, but the thing is, um, typically I do work pretty quickly. But a lot of the time, you know, when when you're figuring out a design and you don't have anything to go off of, and you're just you're really just you know sculpting for fun, you're gonna run into um, points where you're not really sure what it is that you want to make. And that's okay and that's where you should just kind of let the shape speak for themselves is look for something that says hey this is a really cool overall um silhouette and then try and work from that so we don't really know 100 percent what every single one of these limbs is going to be or what the base inspiration is for uh, any of this really we're just going off of hey, that's a cool shape And then once it's a cool shape we can start to figure out well This could be more insect or this could be like a cheetah or this could be you know And you start thinking about things that you have seen in real life and implementing that but it does it does take uh, Does take some time as opposed to just like, you know thumbnailing in a sketchbook. We're just we're just, you know, sculpting it instead. just the pinky finger just the pinky finger alone is gonna have like this massive massive like scythe like thing try it see what that looks like and another thing too is like you know when you're when you're working on conceptual things and just for fun and all of that, don't be so afraid of deleting something and trying again. Like, it's okay if you have to delete and try again. It's absolutely okay. In fact, you should. You should get rid of things that aren't working so you can try again and try again and try again and try again and try again until you get something that is really cool. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror and weld this afterwards. I'm just kind of like not caring about it right now. And 
kind of like flat in this. Like it's like a flat hand. Like, I, like it's just weird. It's like a flat, like, yeah, I'm going to try that. You'll hear, hear me say multiple times, like, here, let's, let's try that. Let's try it. Let's try it. You know? So that's what a lot of this is, is just like, let's try it. <laughs> All right, let's merge that down so that I can get a little bit better of a thing here. A better connection that can be dynamesh later. Hey Merrick! You choose this Pokemon as your starter? Yeesh. Yeesh. <laughs> Dark Souls. <laughs> Tiny pincers with the hands are too adorable. Yeah, we're just, we're not gonna make them adorable, trust me. It's gonna it's gonna have like nasty like sword things going on. Whoa, what's going on down here? What is this? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Did you guys see that? I mean, I'm not mad about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not mad about it. I think I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know what it is, but... Like, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just don't know. Maybe it was like a, yeah. When I was, uh. Masking some stuff, I guess. Got all weird and funky. Freaky deaky. See, it's stuff like this where I'm like, you know, it wasn't intended, right? Like that wasn't intended. But I'm also like not mad at it, you know what I mean? Like it comes out and you're like, oh, wow, let's just like, let's play with this shape, you know? It's literally a happy accident, but it works. It's actually pretty cool. Like it's like a little frill. Oh, uh, elbow frill. He fancy, you know? Mantis scissor hands. <laughs> like, actually, though, that's, that's what's going on here.
aware. Do do do. can grab these guys. Actually this one right here. I will split that off just so it's not in the same um, the same sub tool. You can get more freedom here. This sort of like a really thin it's like papery, not papery, uh what's the word ribbony, like a ribbon. Grab the clouds, them claws. Grab this part too. <laughs> like a Tim Burton movie? Oh, yeah. You know, okay. Tim Burton, man. Ugh. I, I guess you're talking about the, uh, like, Nightmare Before Chris Christmas type deal. Like, those really, like, slender, like, creepy, like, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Burton. It's funny. This music's so chill, I just like getting lost in the in the sauce, you know? It's so definitely not what I usually listen to. I'm just really like zoning. So if you guys got any questions, like, definitely ask. It's all good. I will answer, because I am, I am zoning. Otherwise, it's just a chill, real chill day, you know? I only kind of, sort of. <laughs> Why are you dead? What's going on?
she needs nail polish but like for her whole finger right like not even just like the nail like her whole finger just needs to be coated in nail polish it's like a shiny super glossy holographic nail finger polish <laughs> it's a tickling monster she does have 10 tickles tentacles <laughs> Hypnotized by the stretchy. The stretchy is a lot of fun, man. Stretchy, the stretchy is how I live. Stretchy is good. save this exoskeleton polish yeah can you imagine like a bug character is just like yes I'm don't bother me I'm painting my exoskeleton <laughs> just literally coating like their back like wings or whatever In a hurry, carrying huge bags, yes. <laughs> I actually love that idea of exoskeleton polish. That's funny. Do I use my own UVs retopo? It depends on the project. Do I do my own UVs retopo? Yeah, it depends on the project. Sometimes I'm hired as uh, specifically a concept sculptor, but um, on other projects I'm like a full character artist, so it does depend on the, on the project. Uh... <laughs> oh jeez. Uh... Just gonna look up something really quick and show you guys, but I completely forgot what it was that I was gonna look up. I can remember. Oh. Wait, no. No worries. 839. Hope you have a great night. It's kind of a draft. Are you going to go for a finished project? A lot of the time, these are just kind of like con concept things that I just take maybe to an illustration point, but um, it's just a sketch, right? Like when you're sketching things, it's never really like a full uh, project. It's just. You just sketch him for the sake of sketching. If I end up liking something enough, I usually take it to like an illustration point, but I, a lot of the times, like I don't like to do like character modeling on my own time just cause like I, I, I get so many, like I just get antsy and I want to keep like sketching things. That's kind of like the blessing and a curse at the same time because it's like well if you just sit down and do a full project then you'll have a full project in your portfolio that's outside of all of like this tv and um movie work that you've done but you know <laughs> yeah the concept process is a lot of fun uh hold on give me one second Trying to remember what I was gonna show you guys, but I can't find it, which really sucks. Sucks. Wait, wait. Okay, whatever. I don't need to show you guys. It's fine. <laughs> Should have just pinned it before. It was just like this really cool um, bug. Can't remember what it's called. Orchid ma mantis are really cool though too. If you guys have ever seen Orchid Mantis. Actually, if you've played Animal Crossing, you've probably seen Orchid Mantis.
Ethan's grabbing a banana peel with disgust. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty banana peel. And depending on how old that banana peel is, it could be pretty, pretty gross. So I can agree with this creature. One thing I absolutely hate taking out is the compost. I hate how compost gets so warm. Like it, it, it generates energy because of the decomposition that's happening. Oh, I hate that it's warm and smelly. Why? Why you gotta be warm? Like I know why you're warm, scientifically speaking, but why? Why you gotta be like this? Compost and be nasty. The hands remind you of salad fingers, yes. Ew, I hate salad fingers, man. I hate it so much. So freaking gross. No worries, princess. Have a great night. Thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy Transylvania. A rusty spoon. Hate it. Hate it. <gasps> All right, let's figure out this because Lordy knows I'm not pretty happy with I'm not too happy with the uh, the profile. I think to remedy that, I'll probably start to. Dynamesh some things, get some more resolution going so that I can fix up a little bit of this. Like especially with the neck area here, like it, all of this stuff, I think I need to give a little bit more love. I don't like this side um, pro like the profile so we can see what Dynamesh at 128 does probably too high considering how long it's taking it's definitely too high three mil 3.8 mil nah 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 let's try again let's do let's do 20 Hey, how's he? How are you doing? What's up? What's good? How's it going? <laughs> that should be that should be like your thing. How's it going? You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I'm glad you like it. I mean, we could keep it as like a... We could let him have that hanging off of his chin. Just call him Peter Griffin. <laughs> um, accidental ball sack is accidental. <laughs> but I also kind of am not mad about it. <laughs> like... Like... Like, I'm kind of like, not that mad about it. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very happy accident, isn't it? Very happy. Very, very happy.
Yeah, like a gross, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely gross, like. Um, have I worked in any big production kind of new in the CGI family? Oh yeah, no, cool. It's a, yeah, I've worked in, in a number. Um, currently working on a thing for Netflix, um, TV show. Uh, doing like a bunch of different freelance work. Um, a couple of the things, like, so my first project ever was <laughs> Barbie Starlight Adventure! Ah! Like, and you know what? I'm not even mad about it. Um, I did Disney's Elena of Avalor. I worked on a couple of other films that never got released. I worked on a bunch of TV shows that never got released. Um, you know what the most recent thing that probably is like oh i know what that is is if you've seen on netflix uh animation is uh next gen i did work on next gen as well as a character sculptor do i have a name for this cool looking creature no <laughs> happy accidents i guess mr ribbon boy um He's a uh, he's an he likes he's almond almond. His name is almond. How's that? Let's, uh, let's get a alpha on this one. There we go. Sometimes putting an alpha on your move brush can create some really cool stuff as well. And I really like doing that for frilly things. put AccuCurve on it. Take that off. I'm gonna like fill in all of this area right here. Give it a little bit of a whoop. Create some more of those like weird gill filtration things.
Give it a little bit of thick. <laughs> I we're just going with this too like yeah no 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 worries it's not a big deal yeah it's not a big deal don't think don't think about the thing hanging off of his face or anything <laughs> the poly count right now we're at like two million it's like who cares it really doesn't matter because once you dynamesh stuff, then you can retopologize on top of it, anyways. Amazing gin. I want to keep it. I want to just like roll with it. Muscle shapes when they change on pose might happen on a neutron star. Who knows, man? I have no idea what what conditions could create something like this, but it's fun anyways. Save and I'll put that down to 20 like everything else. Dynamesh. Just to get fired. <laughs> Print it just to get fired. Yeah, because you'd probably break the machine. You'd probably break your printer because this is super unoptimized. Oh my gosh. Now we're gonna take a uh, snake hook, put an alpha on it, and just kind of do that. Shake it a little bit, and you can turn things in, you know, it's kind of fun. I think I want to do it too much though. All like nice and shaky, 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 shaky. Shaky. Shake it up. And then take that off. Pull it in a little bit. Pull these out just a bit more. And and 
like so, so that we can open that up a little bit and it's not just uh, the front area. I want to make this neck hang down more. We're going to do a lot of like flabby skin, I think will help this a lot. It's just like, let it be flabby, you know? Flabby and gross. Hey Doyle, uh, you want my tutorials? Huh? <laughs> well, okay, maybe maybe at some point I'll figure out making an, some uh, some tutorials. Right now, though, I don't have anything on the list of tutorials to make or anything like that. I've been thinking of stuff, but it's just like getting the time to the mental energy to really do it. May not seem like it, but quite the anxious person. <laughs> so that kind of consumes a lot of me if I'm not doing uh, work for a client or whatever. I have free time, then I just end up wasting a day being anxious. <laughs> I laugh, but it sucks. <laughs> But it's good to keep busy with uh, with stuff. So I don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll keep thinking about it. I'll try and think of something that is uh, is helpful to people. I mean, there's always like there's always these these streams too, right? So. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. I know it's not really like the same as a tutorial watching me do something like this, but you know, it's still you're still looking at a workflow, right? more of my stuff all right all right well i'll i'll keep giving you as much as i can <laughs> the snake hook thing was super helpful i'm glad that's awesome yeah there's like a bunch of things you could do so like if you if you grab like any any brush that you have anything can have a alpha on it so it's a fun thing to just you know play around with and see what kind of results that you get from it Sometimes you're gonna get things that you were, are like, "Ooh, what a neat little like trick that is!" and you might use it in your workflow all the time. So, it's fun to experiment. Don't be afraid of the brushes. Um, I'd recommend saving your work before you do anything too extreme, though, because if you 
grab something super high poly with a really crazy like VDM on it and you start pulling or with like sculptures on or something like that, you could probably crash the program. Um, so when you're experimenting, just make sure you're being safe about it. <laughs> Recently got a notice, there's now a free but limited ZBrush Core Mini. Finally understand why you use Snake Hook instead of Move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Snake Hook is, it, it makes things a lot faster, right? Like you can move stuff a lot faster, more freely than the Move brush does. But if you're somebody who likes things a little bit more constrained um, and you don't have that chaos energy, <laughs> then the Move tool, like the Move brush is probably your best bet. But I have internalized that needs to be externalized chaos energy. And what better way to do that with Snake Hook? A lot of ways it's better than a tutorial because we get to see what I do and undo things, fix issues, and etc. Split ex immediate explanations of what happened and then what I did about it. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? Like, that's what I was thinking is that these are like a lot more valuable than um, certain kinds of tutorials that I would put out. And that's sort of the reason why I'm like, well, I have like, I've put out so many of these videos now, like over a hundred, like we're getting like 110 or something like that. I don't even know. I've lost track now, like how many videos. Um, four hour long live videos that I've put out in the over over two years of doing this so I Mean like there's so much content out there, but like the the more convenient thing is like I know that most people don't sit through these uh, these streams for four hours and It's nice to have all the information sort of compiled for you So I get the, like that aspect of it as well, but it is it's like, you know, everything that I do is for, for sketching anyways, um, is all kind of like out there. It's all available. I like, I like the idea of stuff being accessible, you know? It's like sure, I don't have it all like compiled super nice and tidy, but the fact that it's out there is, is nice. Don't want to gatekeep any information. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Let's see, what would the scale of this guy be? Like, if we were to. Um, could we like, like there's like, we've got like a, a basic, basic person that I can bring in here, right? Like super average man, maybe Nick Z's average man, Nick Z's uh, dude could probably bring in here. Wait, that is not the right one. There we go. There we go. <gasps> Hide that. Hide yourself, sensor. There we go. Okay. I'd say like he's probably like that big. Can't gatekeep Monty's fierce being slowly mellowed over time. <laughs> he he's getting 
good. He did bark at a lady today um, who was just saying hi to him, and he doesn't like that. He does not like that. But the lady was nice about it. If I could get Monty to apologize, I would, because that was very rude. <laughs> Oh my god, I need to clothe this man. This is making me uncomfortable. You need to be clothed. I'm just kidding, it's not making me uncomfortable. Life drawing is a thing that I am very well experienced with. <laughs> gonna give him some basic shorts and uh, give him a tank top too why not That's right, I'm still down here. Oh. I don't know why I'm even bothering with this right now. I'm like really like out of it today, if you can't tell. Argentina! Uh, give him a thong. <laughs> Too sexy. <laughs> Too sexy for this stream. What's my name? My name's Ash. Ashley. funny because like this would have been easier to do like if I were just like doing it in symmetry mode but I decided it would be fun to just kind of not pay attention to what it is that I'm doing at all I guess today um today we are in loopy world loopy chill world Anyways, this is Joe with his friend Mo. This is Joe and Schmo. The magical concept art duo. I think it would be even more impressive if uh, this guy was holding a stick like he was traveling the lands. <laughs> as, as we do with all good uh, concept art pieces, 
<laughs> That's sarcasm for you all. Because every single... Almost every single, like, thing to show for scale is, like, the traveling man with the stick. You know? They just, they just have a stick, for whatever reason. Traveling... Concept art man with a stick. I'm sure you've seen that a lot on Art Station. There we go. It's got a stick for good measure. Wow. <laughs> He's my bro. There we go. Oh, yeah, I want to take a break. That's what I want to do. I'm going to go and get a drink and stretch go to the bathroom you know all that kind of fun stuff hey bobby what's good what's good aish 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 call me whatever you want <laughs> thanks bobby appreciate it it means a lot and get monty yeah when i come back for sure while you guys are at it, if you want to know, um, you want to know some cool creature creature artists. Bobby's in the uh, in the chat right now. You can check out his stuff. Uh, Archer, is that you for a, like you you're, you draw all the uh, the really cool kind of like iguana looking creatures a lot of the time? Let me let me let me know if I'm getting this right, or is it a different Archer? My bad if I if I don't have this right. <laughs> I try to remember all the names all the time. It's very hard for me. Um, okay, so anyways, there's a bunch of cool people in chat. You should check them out. <laughs> I will be back in uh, a few minutes. Let me set this up so it's filling the screen somewhat. Sadly not. Okay. Well, maybe one day you'll be that. <laughs> Or maybe today you'll be that. Or if you I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. There's cool people in the chat, though. Check them out. I am going to put the BRB up. Forgive me. I am quite, like, spacey today. And I will be back in just a few minutes. Going to the bathroom, etc., etc. I will put socials up on the screen. There we go. All right. I'll be back in a bit. Uh, don't burn the place down. Apologies for assuming people were somebody different. <laughs> Just get up and stretch. Okay.
got a Monty boy. Yeah. No. Pupper time. <laughs> yeah, that's what all you guys are here waiting for. I swear, like you, like you can just come in at eight p.m. Eight p.m. is Monty, Monty p.m. You know. <laughs> It's funny because he does this thing now too, where um, uh, when it, when we come back in the room, he just like waits by my chair because he knows I'm gonna pick him up <laughs> to show everybody. He's like, "Yay, it's me in front of the stream time! I know what time it is." If I ever do a presentation at the ZBrush Summit, bring Monty. <laughs> He would be so scared. I wish he was more chill that I could bring him. That was like the, that was, you know, when I was getting a dog, that's sort of like what I had in mind is like, he'd be my little travel buddy. But since day one, he's been oh, like, he's been so scared of everything. It's just the way that he is, you know, like he's just a, he's a timid boy. It doesn't, I don't think traveling is in the cards for him, but we try. We try to socialize him to as many things as we possibly can within the means of him being afraid or whatever, but, you know. Yeah, I'm his comfort human, it seems. <laughs> He's got anxiety. Got anxiety. He has awesome fur. I know! And this, like, scruff right here on his neck is just like, ooh. Squishy, squishy. Jack Russell mixed with a bull terrier. <laughs> He's a corgi though, which is like crazy, right? He's just look at this boy. Look at this boy. Look at this boy. He's a long boy. He's a long potato sack boy. Potato. There we go. <laughs> hey Rahul, how's it going? They do live stream summit this year and they have all the artists live stream bring, bring them on the stream then oh yeah like if i'm if i'm live streaming it's from here absolutely won't you always say hi straight from disney yeah he's just like like he's like a little sack <laughs> like do he stick by you when i take him out oh yeah yeah no he does not like whenever like, if I go out with uh, with Eric and we're walking together, if one of us leaves, then he just kind of like is like, why is the other person leaving? And I think he's got a, a, a level of separation anxiety as well. But that like, you know, that comes with generalized anxiety in dogs too. So it's just stuff that we have to constantly work on with him. Hey, hey. I let you go. Are you balancing with your neck? What are you doing? Okay, come on. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Whiny little lad. Yeah, this morning he was just whining about nothing. He was whining and whining and whining, and I was like, what do you want? <laughs> and he goes over to his tug rope and just stares at it. I'm like, really? You're gonna be that obnoxious? Like, I'm not playing with you if you could just whine about it the entire time. Be polite, and then maybe... <laughs> bratty sometimes but when you're on here you're not you're just like really chill when you're here really chill when i'm picking you up but when you're not you're not you're a brat ew did your nose just drip on me nancy that's my cue to put you on the ground there you go there you go <laughs> ew I've got nose drip on my leg now Oh my god, you shed so much. I just brushed you two. How? How? How do you produce so much hair? This dog can actually produce a whole other dog of hair every single day, I swear. Insane. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm used to him farting on me though. All in the life of having a dog, I guess. <laughs> I 
existential anxiety. That's a whole other breed. It's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> All right. Monty. Monty is a corgi. He is a tricolored corgi. Corgi as a measure instead of a human. <laughs> this is your your corgi. Corgi for scale. So a man is corgi for scale, his stick and and uh and his monster. <laughs> um no, it's not a rerun. This is live. Uh, what tablet am I using? I am using a Wacom Cintiq 21.5 inches and it is uh, not touch. Can the Corgi have a pet mouse? Oh no, why? Why would the Corgi have a pet mouse? Why are we getting that tidy? Why? <laughs> XP pen is better. Okay. I'm glad you have a favorite. Hmm. 
You made a 2 t board to shove him and go full mile and sculpt him. Do it. There, I sculpted him. He's like a... a just... <laughs> it looks exactly like him. What are you talking about? Look at it. Look, 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 it's him. Him. It's great. It's not mangled at all. This is this is Corgi right here. Corgi, definitely Corgi. Wait, what am I doing? To actually work on this. There. <laughs> it's beautiful. What are you talking about? That's a Corgi. It's a Corgi for sure. Here, wait, hold on. I'm gonna turn this man into. No, I'm not. I'm not going to. Stop being silly. Okay, come on. We're gonna. We're gonna <laughs> sculpt. I am so out of it today. Oh man. It's just these textures, and you'd never know it was a mesh. Oh my god. Wait, hold on. Are you like... <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> oh no. We just we just <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, let's see the other side. Wait, hold on, let me where's the uh there's the where's the mirror horizontal? There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Just... Monty. Shh. I know, this is very exciting, Monty. In your place. We just... Get it all lined up. Beautiful. We just... Oh. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful! You can't even... for television it's like <laughs> I just need you to appreciate <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> in regards to position for television such do you network to get all these positions or at this point do they reach out to you a lot of places actually reach out to me um, because there is like a, a word of mouth, right? Word of mouth networking. So I've worked with quite a few places now that the people who have worked with me will go on to other projects and then they'll remember me that I'm, I'm a freelancer and if they need freelancers, then they will contact. Um, but you know, if there is ever a really long period of time where I don't have work and I'm starting to struggle for money, I will definitely be contacting studios as an individual and sending examples of my work and being like, hey, do you need a, any work done? I'm available for work looking and stuff. So that, that, that can definitely be a thing, but yeah. <laughs> yes. No, it's, it's, a, it's a hyper real corgi. It's a hyper real corgi, you can't tell. <laughs> exactly what a quirky looks like in real life. I don't know what's what are you talking about? Don't diss my art skills. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh my god. If, if any of the devs came and saw this right now, I would love it. I would love it. I would- I would- I would be so happy. <laughs> Actually, what are you doing? Oh, you know. Just, you know, my- my regular hyper real stuff. There. Beautiful. Actually, no. Keep it low poly. It's beautiful. Alright. You can. You can. I showed you exactly how to. You can make a quirky even better than that. <laughs> I'm just dynameshing everything right now. So I have enough, uh, topology to work from. Kind of curious as to what we can kind of create here. I think that could be really cool too. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go from the bottom up then if I'm doing that. Again, like, you know, experimenting is we're grabbing all of this, like, crusty stuff right here and pulling it out to create kind of, like, a neat, um, flower kind of uh, frilly texture because it's already crunchy, right? So if it's already crunchy, you're gonna get this shape when you're pulling it out, which can be a lot of fun. A lot of neat, uh, kind of shapes. Now, I don't want to ruin that silhouette from the front. So I'll have it only come out a little bit. Soul of the Departed, you, if that's what you want to call it. I have no idea what this is, to be honest. Like, we're just having fun here, sculpting whatever. We're just sketching, you know? Letting, letting sketching be fun. And I'll grab this crunchy bit right here. This kind of sounds like Halo song. You know, like the like from Halo 2 or something. Not gonna lie, I really wish that they evolved um, Master Sh Master Chief's storyline and gave him more depth rather than having, you know, like, cause I, I, I was like a huge fan uh, when, when I was younger, but you know, what Halo is now is not really Master Chief, which is fine, it's fair. But I do kind of wish that Master Chief ha had a little bit more humanity to him, even though I know it, like they're supposed to be like the Spartans are supposed to be sociopaths. <laughs> like quite literally, to be a Spartan, you have to be a sociopath. But I wish there was like a little bit like more to him than just his deep voice. 
his deep voice is pretty cool and I did like so Steve Downs is the the voice actor for Master Chief and I when I was younger I got to go to Fan Expo in Toronto and meet him and I was so happy and after that like fan culture for me kind of just died off like I wasn't like into any like fandom or anything like too much I mean I guess there was also Assassin's Creed like I fell into that trap <laughs> Looks like something you'd fight in Monster Hunter. What could the costume look like? Oh, for this? Yeah, I feel like there would be like a lot of like fur. It would be like, it'd probably be like carapacy and leather and then like, you know, the fur that would stick out would be very like, well, it would be, it would look kind of like this, like sticking out of like the armor patches and stuff. That would be kind of neat. A mantis summoner? Yeah, 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 for sure. It does look like a summoner because of the way that the hands are. Souls of the Departed, is that a shoe brand? That could be a fun, like, goth shoe brand, actually. Oh my god! That would actually be such a fun goth, like, boot store or something like that, calling it- Roy, that's a good idea! But, like, gothy, right? Or even, like, punk and stuff like that, like, just, like, like, military-looking boots, like, black, like, you know, thigh highs and stuff like that, calling it the Souls of the Departed. It's got a whole bunch of, like, skulls on all of these, like, shoes and stuff. Oh my god. That's... Get on that! Get on that! That's a thing! Look at us here, figuring all these things out that could be amazing brands. You gotta get on that, Roy. <laughs> The allure of Master Chief is that he's a mysterious character with a hidden background. If you explore that, then he loses part of that in his initial appeal. So yes, but have you actually gone back and kind of watched, like rewatched all of those cinematics and stuff? And I feel like as an old, like, you know, as you get older, that allure of the mysterious person it can still be there, but there needs to be a little bit more because he doesn't really say anything. There isn't actually any character building with Master Chief. I love Halo so much, but as I get older, like I definitely am seeing like, you know, he's not he's he's a very one dimensional character. So I just kind of wish that there was like more there. You don't need to dive super, super deep because m characters can be mysterious, right? And there can be this allure to them, but then a sort of like e evolution where you do start to discover that adds a layer of depth. I look like Dennis Richards. I love looking like a man. Thank you. Would I consider teaching in China? I mean, there's kind of a ban right now, isn't there, on traveling? But if, if you know, let's say all of this uh, virus stuff cleared up and we were allowed to leave our countries, <laughs> I'd be down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do I speak Chinese? No, no. But I know that actually, um, depending on the parts of China that you go, I have a lot of friends that told me that the, they actually speak, uh, they learn English, so. That was actually super impressive. I was, I was really impressed to learn that. That 
chin turkey thing came to say hi. I know it did, didn't it? It's it's there, you know. It's, it's there, all right. So yeah, we got like the crunchies. I love playing with crunchies. Don't be afraid of the crunch. I mean, if this was happening to your final model, though, maybe be a little bit afraid of the crunch, right? Like, you don't really- you don't want this on, like, the low res. You don't want this on your- your final low res, but on your concept. The crunch is tasty. Sitsy boy. Zbrush white screen of death. Oh yeah, but like when it does that though, Eric, um, a lot of the time it's it's gonna have a save for you. I find the white screen is not as scary as like occasionally you'll be doing too many actions all at once and then it'll just shut off. For the white screen, like usually usually you'll have like a saved file. You need to crash first, yeah. How long have you been waiting? <laughs> Morvin, I've done that. I've done that before. Uh, did you save? That sucks. You just cry. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a thing that happens. You know how many times I've crashed on stream too? Most of the time though, the the white screen will give you a like auto save of some kind. So if, I'd say like nine times out of 10, I've had a, like, you know, an auto save from the white screen of death. It's good now, nice! We have prayed, and they have answered. <laughs> Coming here would help, yes. That's what we do. Just need to embrace the chill vibes. And remember to say very, very often. <laughs> Let's grab the alpha.
Do I have an art station? Yes, I do. I'll put my socials on the screen so you can see. There you go. Yeah, it's that like do 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 do. You, you hear that? Do do that. That sounds like the Halo. Uh, every time I hear that, it just sounds like Halo Two to me. Yes, Ashley A. Adams is me. Yeah, is me. Am I a big Halo fan? I used to be. I really, I used to be. Um, yeah. It's not really like, I don't know, whatever, it hasn't really evolved in my opinion. Like the, the brand itself is just kind of stagnated. Uh, everything that comes out Halo related isn't like exciting to me anymore. I feel like it, like it started off really strong and yeah. Hey Asin, how are you? Uh, do I have a regular keyboard or a mini one? I have a regular keyboard. Any lockups you get now? You usually wait. And recovers. Yeah, it's just like if you're waiting for 15 minutes, though, just accept your fate. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. He's got. He's got a. Uh, he's got some low hanging fruit. Um. All the better to pick it with. I'm glad you're good, Asin. It's been a little while. It looks creepy. That's good. We like creepy, right? We like creepy. Creepy's fun. In old China, I don't know. If I had a guide and somebody to help me translate, then I don't see why not. I love visiting new places. It's just it's one of those things that's like if there's like a really big language barrier. Then it might be more harm than good for me to go. You know. I had a, a guide, so be to show me around. Don't see why not. Don't see why old China would really want me to teach this though. <laughs> they can get everything online. If 
I convert it to be a magical creature, you know, for levitating that triangle piece, all my creatures just like that I do for sketching are all just kind of magical in some way, right? They're, you know, just gotta, gotta levitate that stuff. Levitation. Levitation is always fun. It's okay to indulge in like, you know, like a little bit of a, what are they called again? When you expect it, like a trope, right? I feel like levitation with creatures and like magic stuff is some kind of like a trope in art. It's okay to indulge in some tropes though. Nothing wrong with that. What was the thought behind the fungal looking overhangs right below the forearms? Not too much, to be honest with you. A lot of the time I'm just going for shape. Um, and then I take those shapes and kind of, you know, take them around. So the fact that I started doing that uh, stuff over here on the neck and then over on the horn areas as well, um, is why I was just like, well, you know, you start it, you start like this shape language, you start this sort of uh, design language rather. It's good to carry it around your your creature or your character, just so that it feels more um, conjoined rather than oh, well, here's just a little uh, bit of that sort of fungal slash flowery overhang or underhang in this one area but not in the rest right so it's good to carry that through of course if you're doing something that's more like here's an accent piece where it's just just like a focal point then that can be fine by itself but it's good to continue design language throughout your entire model your whole enti entire design really thanks it's your boy Lots of people studying this, that's great. Yeah, I mean, anybody you know, let's introduce them to the streams and there's lots of info here, right? I'm sorry, I can't speak multiple languages though. A lot of things so you know when you're doing stuff like this too like right now I'm not thinking too much about texture and stuff like that but if I were I would probably be thinking about how um, you know those are also going to be different materials from everything else and adding like a breakup uh, is important too 
for your for your model like a material breakup works the same way as uh, lines breaking up forms wood Hey, Rai, what's good? How you doing? Uh, is that a series of monsters? This? This is just one monster. I don't know. I'm just doing whatever. Yeah, I, that that's what I figured, right? I don't I don't have multiple languages under my belt. <laughs> What are we cooking up tonight? Uh, whatever this is. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah, there's lots of free streams though, QQ. They, you know, if if they, I don't know what their the internet over there is looking like, but if they can get, um, uh, oh no, what are they called? If they, if they can at any time access YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or I guess it, it, it's a little bit complicated huh but if they they can internet wise there's lots of streams on the Pixelogic channel for them uh VPN thank you thank you sorry out of it right now all right see you Talon thank you so much for hanging out I hope you have a great great rest of your night
Hey, Cam. Am I regularly streaming uh, on ZBrush? Yes, I, I, I regularly stream um, multiple times every month, usually on Wednesdays, mostly on Wednesdays, pretty much only on Wednesdays. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just using the slash brush. Slash brush can get you from pretty far, honestly. It's kind of weird when I don't talk at all. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get lost in the sauce, you know? Do I concern myself with muscle structure uh, and anatomy on weird creature like this? Or is it afterthought, shape, form? Um, it Like, initially, it will be shape and form. Um, and then I will make the muscles make sense and make make it work. But the thing is, there is an aspect uh, subconsciously that you know I'm I am thinking about I am thinking about muscle structure as I'm doing this, like you know subconsciously it's in the back of my head. Um, but active muscle thought, like actively making something work or look like it works, is definitely after the shape looks cool, right? Like we want something that has like a neat looking silhouette first. Is topology usually a concern when you make such shapes, say for games, because sometimes such shapes become a nightmare to create later on for engines. Yes, so if you're doing something for games and you have a very specific poly uh, budget and a specific rig structure and reusability that you have to consider and things like that, something like this may not be considered, right? However, when, and this is, you know, when you're, when you're concepting things though like this, it doesn't really matter. So topology doesn't matter when um, you're just in ZBrush, but if you were to take this for production, a lot of things would have to be uh, like ironed out and Doing topo like making topology um, for like you know making this like work these tiny bits usually with that I just you know with with Maya um, and kind of doing a retopology retopo retopologizing on it I will just model that over over top of what it is like I won't let it kind of like. Like I won't use Maya's like snap function on top of this because it's so thin. I will usually just extrude and create like a finger from scratch, like if I'm retopologizing. Yeah, I'm using, uh, I'm not using Streamlabs OBS, I'm just using OBS Studio. Where's its head? Oh, um, head's up here. Above the, uh, the low-hanging fruit thing. <laughs> How and when did I get started with ZBrush? Um, six years ago is when I first started with ZBrush, around there, I think, something like six years. Uh, I got started when I was in school, but I was in school for 2D animation, and um, my now boyfriend Eric was a classmate at the time, and he, uh, he was playing around with ZBrush, had a had a really like you know a cool tutorial that he was doing from somebody that we used to work at Ubisoft or whatever it was, and he was learning how to make armor and things and. Just watching him sculpt got me really like interested in the program and I just kind of like picked it up and I just started messing around without any tutorials or anything or guidance. I just kind of like started mucking with the tools and I just I immediately got addicted to it. I was really bad, obviously, but Snake Hook was the first <laughs> brush that I ever tried and for whatever reason using the snake hook as the move function for me has stuck ever since <laughs> and that's sort of that's how I got started really is just uh yeah I just started like messing around with it because I saw Eric was using it and I was like oh monkey see monkey do <laughs> it's really addicting if you try it like it's a it's a really addicting program you know
Never forget your first brush. No, you don't. I mean, technically, standard is your first brush. It's everyone's first brush. But the first one that I really started using that I remember is Snake Hook. Is there any requirements for PC to handle the program without issues? What I would say is, um, is just make sure that your RAM is higher than 8 gigs. <laughs> I got by with 16 gigs of RAM on my last rig, but, you know, if you, if you can have 32, you're in a good, you're in good shape, right? Um, if you got a, you know, decent enough CPU, so something that's not like 10 years old, you'll still be able to run this, like, no problem. If you're looking for higher, uh, you know, higher poly count, like higher, higher points and like multiple sub tools and stuff like that, you're going to want better and better stuff. But as a minimum requirement, I'd say anything above eight gigs of RAM will do you good. <laughs> but I, again, it's just like not many people have eight gigs of RAM at this point. Yours is 111 years old. You have no issues. Well, Cam, you also 11 years old. You 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 do pretty simple um, simple stuff. So if anybody wants to do more complicated things, then you're gonna want to have like a little bit more uh, more oomph. It was very intimidating with the standard brush. Yeah, when you first get in, if you're if you're expecting anything of yourself, anything can be really intimidating. But the thing is, like when I got into ZBrush, I was just like I was already on the track to becoming an animator. So like it was just like a fun thing for me. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm like you know, so I was able to just kind of be free and just do whatever. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, and then it, it changed from like, I don't want to be an animator, actually. I really like this sculpting thing. <laughs> Thanks, War. I'm going to keep that actually open so I can read a bit better here. So then I'm going to bring, wait, bring it down. And this one up.
Did I want a 3D printed present? Oh, no, 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 it's okay, Cam. It's okay. Thank you very much for thinking of me. You don't need to send me anything. Yeah, the snake hook is really, really fun. It, 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 it works really well for just pulling things out and just swishing around. Topo gun is good. A topo gun is coming. There's a topo gun three is coming out, and I, I I don't really like. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious to know what they have in topo gun three that's that's going to be make you feel like oh I I wanna I wanna not retopologize in any of the other programs. That's what I'm curious about. It's pretty nice, right? That's nice. What other 3D programs do I use other than ZBrush? Um, I use Keyshot. Oh, 3D, 3D programs only. Okay, so I use Keyshot, I use Maya, and I use ZBrush as well as Substance Painter. Um, and then 2D programs, I use Photoshop. They cook bay hook. <laughs> uh, what 3D program do I recommend for iPad? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I can't recommend anything for that. The detail that you can get with Snake Hook? Yeah, no, it's great. And there's a thing called AccuCurve as well. If you go into your brush menu um, and then you go to uh, curve right here. AccuCurve is actually really nice because it will... I have it right over here. Um, but AccuCurve is really nice in the fact that like, you know, if you activate it, you can actually get things to like be spikes like that. So you can get some really like nice sharp kind of pullouts as well. I, I really like using it for that. need to fix... I'll need to fix change. Oh, oh, okay. 
Okay. Is, uh, if somebody wants to start this as an exercise to develop concepting, concepting skills as a total beginner who normally has concept art provided, what would be the things to normally keep in mind? Um, okay. Yeah, no, that's a, it's a good question. It's not silly at all. It really isn't. Uh, because going from concept art is, you know, like you're, you're already given the shapes and, um, well, the design, right? So all you have to do, not all you have to do because, you know, honoring the concept is its own challenge. However, what I would say is the difference is that you have to think a lot more about strong shapes rather than seeing what's already in front of you and taking from that. You have to kind of come up with that and figure out like what works for you. So when you're working, you know, like this as an exercise, I would definitely look for strong silhouette first, right? So when we're looking at something like this, let me let me show you how I how we can break this down now the way that I have um, worked on this is not how I'm going to be breaking it down right because I worked from just sketching and finding shapes and things like that but I'll show you what it is that I am looking for as I'm creating so we get the red pen so overall you're gonna want to find what is a cool silhouette now an overall like strong shape well this is my overall shape right we have like this just big like two big shapes here that are like making up this design um, obviously we've got things to break it up like you know smaller triangles right here and like these triangles that break up the design are actually like the negative space is really important as well um, you've got some circles here and right here is like you know we're, we're really making use of negative space triangles right to kind of break up that silhouette but overall you're looking at like this big shape and how that uh and how that actually works for a silhouette and so the balancing act here is taking another shape to contrast it and it is smaller but it helps everything is kind of like leading upwards because tr that's what triangles do right so you get up here there's like a, a break that's a more circular in nature and then because of the triangular triangular shape up here and the horns you're back down again right and then here's some more circles that'll help you do a loop-de-loop -loop. so it's things like this that is are, are, it's sort of like what I'm thinking as as I'm designing um, not actively I'm gonna be honest with you it's not an active uh, you know it's not at the forefront so when I'm trying to explain these things I have to think about what it would have been subconsciously that I'm thinking about initially when you start to design things it'll be like at the forefront of your brain and you're, you're gonna rack yourself for trying to figure out uh, exactly what it is that you want to do silhouette wise like oh is this right is this right if you're if you're looking away from your model right and you're you're taking a break with your eyes and things like that and you're working on those big shapes first and foremost and you're thinking about um, you know how is your eye moving along like you know a creature or a character Think of it kind of like your your eyesight, your eye direction is like water. If it can flow easily, then that's great. But if it gets stuck, like let's say, you know, I kill all this stuff right here. What I mean by getting stuck is like if, for example, I decided to just have like bits right here sticking out, you wouldn't get that, right? You wouldn't go straight up anymore. What you would do is you would get right here and then you would go out. So that can be um, important if, you know, maybe, maybe these things right here could actually exist, 
but they would have to follow like a flow, right? So you're thinking about a flow of your design. So if they if there were things here, which I prefer there not to be because the space this space is actually very nice, right? But if you wanted to have something there, think about flow, right? So there we go. Now we're flowing with the other part of the design. So when you do go up here, you're not being shot out this way. No, no, no. You're going up, right? You're going up and then back down. So that that's sort of like what you want to be thinking about. And I would say like, yeah, if you're doing this as an exercise, the best thing that you can do is to focus on that silhouette, you know, because that is your first read. Your first read of the character or creature or anything it is that you're doing is going to be the silhouette of it. So if it's muddy, if your overall like outside silhouette is like that, what is that, right? Like that's not, that's not enticing to look at. Your eye doesn't really know where to focus or anything like that. And so once you get your silhouette down, then you can start to really hone in on interior details. So this even adds some, adds some flow, like whoosh, right? And all of these lines are kind of like, you know, pointing to the face, which will then go down. So all of that kind of stuff inside is also important. The the lines, even areas where you don't have detail, right? So you don't put detail everywhere. Areas with no detail like this is important because that that is a break for your eye. Now what that does is this, it contrasts. So if you're looking at this right here, this is a smaller shape and it's got all of like these little facets and stuff and that's that's delicious for your eyes, right? They're like, ooh, gotta look at that because it's got detail, your eye is drawn to detail. So having that, but then beside it, there's this sort of space of no detail will help you, it'll give your eye a break and it'll help you flow where it's supposed to flow. It'll let the water go where it's supposed to go, right? However, if I had, you know, here, like a bunch of the same stuff and it was, well, okay, maybe not like that, but like, you know, a, like opposite direction, like doing this, that kind of, that kind of makes you a little bit stuck, right? Like if things were kind of like all over the place, but also sticking out at the same, um, the same distance as this, it becomes kind of like a little bit confusing. You could work with something like that if, say, like you can see down here, I have more prominent areas that are sticking out, dictating flow, and then pushed in areas right here that are giving giving that sense of detail, but you have these prominent lines that are helping the flow happen. So considering that as well is really important too. Um, and when you have areas of rest, it doesn't necessarily have to be clean like this. It can just mean that the details are less pronounced. And the, what you're focused on here is is this sort of flow that's happening, right? Because of everything else that's kind of pushed out and protruded. So hopefully that makes sense. Silhouette, then anatomy, then detail. Yeah, that's how I like to approach stuff. Again, like the way that I approach um, concept and sketching and things like that is not gonna be the same as everyone, right? Um, but if you do like this method of working, then that's what I would recommend that you do is you focus on the silhouette and the overall shape of everything first and then work your way down into the details. So often I see people um, send me creatures where it looks like they're not paying attention to the silhouette. They've just got all kinds of little like squiggles like hanging off in any which way direction that they want, but they're not paying attention to what that looks like in like as a silhouette there's nowhere for me to focus and they're so concerned about the interior details looking cool and you know you, you you zoom in like this and you start working on this one little part that when you zoom out again you're not really like 
you know you didn't pay attention to what was really important which is the initial read so i know it's it's sort of one of those things where it's not it's not super fun because everybody wants to you know when you're when you're when you're drawing things right when you're when you're drawing things you want to you want to sit there and you want to shade the eye and make it all nice and pretty and add the little like eye specks and the shines and everything like that because details are fun rendering is fun um you know putting in all those little wrinkles it's fun but you can't rush that you can't rush that because if you don't have your foundations all of that's going to be for naught so you gotta try and focus on making that initial sculpt that initial silhouette as strong as you can and when i mean like as strong as you can is when you're looking at the silhouette right there are those like strong shapes you can look at that and be like like look at this silhouette and be like that's that's interesting that's interesting right if you look at it and it's just like a square or something um with a couple of things like shooting off in whatever direction maybe maybe try and like you know add some tapering or uh you know think about where you want your eye to focus on Contrast like connecting dots and dashes. I guess essentially, yeah, you can think of it that way, right? Is uh, different shapes will contrast each other. A big one to think about is um, hard, sharp lines versus curves, right? That's also something to think about that will help. So an example of where I'm doing that is right here. They're hard, sharp lines with a curve. And that really helps you focus in on that area that you want to be flowing through, right? Again, think of water. If you don't think that water could easily, ooh, you know, flow, then, um, then maybe you need to like work something out. However, right, the amount, now this is, this is where things get a little bit tricky and also where you need to start to understand that stylization um, and different approaches to art will dictate how you handle information like this, right? Harder, stronger, rougher characters may not have nearly as many flowy bits, right? They won't have as many curves and things like that. A lot of it might even just be a lot of straights, um, but it's how they use those straights to break up bigger shapes in order to make that design work and to lead your eye in places where it needs to. So there's other elements of uh, design that they will be focusing on, right? Just thinking about where do you want your eye to look and then bring everything to work towards that one spot. Tell them to Google principles of design. <laughs> All right, yeah, you can Google principles of design. <laughs> often draw for 10 hours and your hands get tired. Yeah, I'm not actually, I'm not, I'm not too tired, but if you're drawing for 10 hours, then you gotta be doing your stretches because if you're not doing your stretches, it's no, it's really no good for your wrists.
my manually engraving without using plugins. Um, I'm not engraving. I'm using uh, I'm using the slash two brush right now, which you can find inside of the light box menu in the brush area, brush section. Thanks, Evand. All of this stuff possible in ZBrush Core. I think a lot of it is possible in ZBrush Core. I'm not so sure about the exact brushes that I'm using, but you can probably get some pretty cool creatures out of ZBrush Core. ZBrush Core Mini, however, is a lot more restricted. Um, so if you're using Mini, you won't be able to, you probably won't be able to do something like like this specifically, but you can still get um, you know, some interesting quick designs and things like that. What we really ne need to know is what brush can I use to be as good? <laughs> Just, you know, snake hook. Snake hook. All right, good night, it's your boy. Thanks for hanging out. Can't have masks in Core Mini. That was a bit of a shock. That's because, like, Core Mini is just so that you can get your hands on ZBrush and just get started with it. Um, just to, it's like, it's, it's a lot of it's just for, um, you know, beginners who are unfamiliar with ZBrush, I find. It's really good for anybody who hasn't had any, uh, like literally any experience with 3D sculpting. They just want to know what it's like. Like ZBrush Core Mini is perfect for that. It's not, it's not for like a professional. It's for people who want to like jump into it. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Jacob. I'm sorry I'm slapping you in the face. I don't want to slap anybody in the face. <laughs> yeah, basically you just wanna, yeah, Ivan, you're ex well, exactly. You just wanna like study as much stuff as you can and yeah, you can like mix and match however you want. It's uh... That's really what it is, yeah.
All right, see you, Doyle. Asymmetry in this kind of creature? Definitely. Um, I usually don't do asymmetry when I'm doing sketches like this, though, because it's just, it doesn't, unless it's like something that I specifically want to be super asymmetrical, but yes, like I, I will definitely add asymmetry. Um, if, if something like this were, uh, for a final project, but just, just for like a, a, you know, an exercise, I usually don't bother because it's, uh, I usually just end up throwing stuff away anyways. Am I creative or delegated? What do you mean by that? Like, do I have, uh, do I have tasks given to me or do I create stuff for people? Like, need another explanation. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no worries, Rack. Uh, it, I'm not gonna be on, um, at the beginning of July. I'll be back. Uh, I won't be on on the 1st or the 8th, but I will be streaming on the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th of July. Or you want to say, or you want to move, say, lips without actually, ma oh yeah, if you need to mask things, yeah. Yeah, it evolved. <laughs> Do I have any hobbies besides painting? Oh, don't call me out like that. Oh no. Ooh. <laughs> hobbies be besides uh, art? Uh, I think that's where I, uh, that's where I really need to, yeah. I need to, I need to expand my hobby list. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got a doggo, so training him and walking him is uh, is fun. Uh, I play games if I have the time. Hobbies, though, I, I don't know. Like, I just I do art, man. I just it's not it's not 100% healthy. Like, I just really like art. It's a good escape for me. Like, if I'm feeling. I'm feeling particularly anxious and anxious is almost like obsessive right like anxiety can be obsessive and so if you're feeling like if I'm if I'm obsessing over some thoughts I find that if I can have it in me to distract myself by you know putting myself into work it usually calms down and I feel a lot better so Yes, I did go to college. I went to college for uh, 2D animation. occupational disease now I mean 
to an extent, right? Like it comes from like I guess like vascularly not not the greatest like in terms of like my legs my legs have always been bad though which is why i always tell you guys get up stretch and do stuff like that because i have bad like legs like the veins in my legs don't function properly um at least some of them don't so <laughs> what would the pipeline be like to get this to a game ready asset the pipeline would be uh, so something like this for a game ready asset. Man, it would it would be a lot of cleanup, that's for sure. But what you would want to do um, at this point is probably start retopologizing, so you could at least have like some sort of a cage over what it is that you're doing. And um, I would have even done that at an earlier stage because uh, yeah, a lot of this stuff is really thin geometry, really like. Kind of out there but uh if it were if it were game ready i would do retopology and then reproject the uh the low with subdivisions onto the high right and bake down all of the details into normal maps um probably do that like by splitting up the mesh right i'd probably do the head by itself uh so, you know any anywhere that would, there's like a lot of like close overlapping i would probably do that uh separately and have them kind of stitched together afterwards um for again for game res stuff like i'm just kind of like getting together everything that i know about it i'm not a game artist uh but a lot of these like really thin parts right here like this stuff wouldn't need to be geometry it could be like cards like texture cards so that would be something as well that you could do said a while ago that you're working on a TV show. Yeah, I can't talk about the stuff that I am working on, but yes, it's a TV show. Unreal Engine 5 with no polygon limits. Yeah, but the thing is, you're not going to see that with characters, right? Like, that sort of a thing is going to be used very situationally. I, it's not going to make any difference for a character artist. You're still going to have to know how to retopologize. You're still need, needing to know proper edge flow and clean topology and things like that because riggers are still going to need something that is functional, you know, and animators are going to need something that's functional. You can't give them just like a whatever from ZBrush. It doesn't really work that way. So yes, it can it can deal with a ton of polygons, but also when the game is shipped, right? Uh, imagine having to load in environments that are trillions of polygons heavy. Like that would be like insane low times. Like yes, there's an SSD in the PS5, but there is no way that you're gonna have every single level be like hundreds of billions of polygons just because it's like just because like it's not gonna happen. It's not. It's not gonna be like that. It's cool that they can do that, but it's not gonna be like that. What you should be more interested in and more excited about is the lighting capabilities, that interactive, real-time lighting stuff that they've got going on is really cool. The polygons, though, it's not- that's not where we are. That's not where we're at. It's not happening. <laughs> is it evening there? Yes. Yeah. Do I stay up late to draw? Yeah, I, I usually stay up late working. <laughs> I bought yourself a pending chair because you had the same... Oh, oh really? An expensive chair, but you have it since 10 years now. Oh, neat, a pending chair. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to look that up. I just do specific exercises and I get up every two hours and make sure to walk around as much as possible because it's so important for your legs to do that. And even even people that are healthy, it's important for you to like raise your legs above your your heart um at the end of the day if you've been doing a lot of walking and things like that just to give your your leg veins some some breaks you know leg veins they've got it they've got it hard they've got it rough you know they're at the very bottom they've got to work extra hard <laughs> 
Easy to work at night, people leave you alone. Yeah, I mean, people leave me alone all the time, but <laughs> knowing that there's nothing to do outside because it's not bright and sunny and beckoning me to walk the dog or anything like that really like helps me focus. Is my work sometimes criticized by the company? Of course, yeah. It, you know, critique is part of the job. You have to, you have to deal with critique um, as a professional all the time. It's, it's literally part of it. If you can't take critique, then uh, what are you doing, right? The only way that you're gonna actually be able to nail a lot of what the art director wants and the directors want that you're working on is by listening to their words. The thing is, like, critique doesn't necessarily mean that you're bad either, like, what you're doing is bad. Actually, a lot of the time has nothing to do with that at all, and they can change their direction and ideas, and you have to be ready to just be like, okay, that's part of the job, that's, that's what I do, time to change this. So not treating the things that you are working on as a concept artist as precious is a very important part of the job description. Don't be precious with what you're, you're working on. Oh, thanks. Uh, TV game character, fantastic Star Wars new character, or SW new character. Yeah, it could, it could be anything really that you want, right? It's just sort of like a, a fun sketch. Nothing, uh, nothing that I had in mind. We're just, just sketching. Don't be Gollum. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kya, how are you? You're going military in a few more weeks? Well, uh, good luck. Good luck with that. I really hope that, um, hope everything works out when you do that and, uh, it's easy and you come home safe. <laughs> Imagine the creature as my pet. See, that's why I put the dude there. Look, he's got- it's his pet. He's the gardener. And his corgi. <laughs> Be open for people juggling your work. Exactly, yes. The brush? Uh, you can get it inside of ZBrush, it's already there, and it's in the light box menu. It's called Slash 2.
Hey Manu, how are you doing? Do I physically sculpt? No, I don't. I wish that I did, but no. No, I digitally. I'm a digital girl. It would be pretty cool to have like, you know, a little table behind me that I could just kind of when I'm tired of sculpting digitally I could just go and muck around with some real clay but I like I like ZBrush it's good maybe if I ever move from where I am now I can get a uh, bigger place where I could easily fit in something like that because right now this is like the room looks big but if I were to put a table there or whatever Monty wouldn't have very much room <laughs> Your favorite Pokemon is Pikachu. <laughs> All right, good night, Blackheart. What do I recommend for creating your own brushes? Or I, I don't have really anything recommended for creating your own brushes. I would say use use the brushes inside of ZBrush, and uh, and once you figure out you know what it is that you need for your workflow, then create according to that. Otherwise, it's you know there's not really any point. Custom brushes are only good if it works in your workflow. All right, I think I'm. I think we're good for for now, anyways. Um, you save. Uh. Clay sculpting hurts your fingers and gives allergies. Ah, yeah, I've, I've clay sculpted before. I like it though. And, you know, there's negatives, but there's also so many positives. <laughs> All right, let's put this guy right like this. And I guess we could do a little version of him like this. <laughs> there he is down there. Wait. Kind of hard to like line this one up. Um, I'll put my socials up for anybody who's interested. And yeah, that was uh, that was tonight's. Who's next on the schedule? To, let's see. We have uh, Leon Arts. So Daniel is up tonight at 8 p.m. PST, so that's in an hour from now. How beefy is my computer? Pretty, pretty beefy. <laughs> All right, anyways guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I'll see you uh, in the next time that I'm live, which is probably going to be uh, July 15. So I'm taking two weeks off of streaming, and I will see you in the next one. If you have any interest in trying ZBrush and stuff, remember there is a 30-day free trial for the full version, and if you are new to sculpting in general and you just want to get your hands on something, um, ZBrush Core Mini is completely free, 
and it's a smaller version but simplified UI and everything if you want to jump into that and these are these are my socials in case you want to see any of my other stuff or updates or whatever and uh yeah good night bye bye